Keeping an eye on your health now, young people between 15 and 24 with anorexia have 10 times the risk of dying compared with their peers. That's according to the National Eating Disorder Association. The association also says bulimia is beginning earlier in both boys and girls, and that's why it's important we recognize that National Eating Disorders Awareness Week begins on Monday. Joining me now is Dr. Patricia Westmoreland, a psychiatrist with the Behavioral Health and Wellness Center. Good to see you. Thanks for so much for talking with us today. So how do disease eating orders develop and what are the warning signs? Good to see you too, Michelle, and thank you for inviting me. So eating disorders tend to develop in people in their early teens, sometimes even younger and, and sometimes even later in life. Warning signs are things like suddenly changing a person's diet. So for example, a, a teenager refusing to eat certain food groups or becoming very strict in terms of how much they eat and how much they exercise and becoming very fixated on weight and or body shape. How does social media play a role in this? I think social media plays a huge role in this. Um, as we know, kids who are younger and younger these days are seeing images of individuals that have been unrealistically altered and they think that that is what they need to look like and I think that really plays into it a lot. Low self-esteem also plays into it. It is a common characteristic of those with eating disorders. So how do other disorders such as anxiety, depression, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder, uh, disorder, how does that affect eating disorders? So many individuals with eating disorders, um, first of all, as you said, do have low self-esteem and they also have a drive towards perfectionism. And it, it's not uncommon for individuals with eating disorders to have those comorbid illnesses that you spoke about, depression, anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder. And unfortunately, that makes treating the eating disorder all that more complicated. It's so hard. I have three daughters and it's hard to bring up subjects or talk about weight as a subject because I don't want them to, you know, really obsess about it. But sometimes as women, we do that. What can we do to combat that? And what are some signs that, you know, we can look for in our kids? I, I agree with you, Michelle. I have a, a daughter too, and uh, is preteen, and I watch the conversation she has with her friends and the things she's talking about and the things she brings up very carefully. And um, it, it's interesting. I think some of those conversations have have paid off um, because she was watching something with me on TV the other day and commented on the fact that somebody looked way too thin. And I thought, well, that's good because she's looking at a model and not saying that that is a person who looks great and who she should emulate. So I think it's important for all of our children to emphasize that there's so many other aspects about them that are important and special, not the way they look, not the shape of their body. We want our bodies to be healthy but being unnaturally thin is not healthy. Sure. Well, what can someone expect from treatment if they should seek it? I think it's really important for people to know that they should seek treatment as soon as possible. It is never too early to seek treatment for an eating disorder. Depending on um, how severely ill the individual is, uh, treatment may require medical stabilization, um, may require stay on an inpatient unit. But if caught at the really early stages, management with a primary care doctor, a dietitian, and a therapist, um, is something that is, is usually very helpful to getting the person back on track early on. Okay, all good information. Thank you, Dr. Westmoreland. Good to see you. And remember, National Eating Disorder Awareness Week is February 27th through March 5th. Remember, you can watch all of our health interviews right now on cbscolorado.com.